Okay, everyone, thank you. I'm going to call this uh, council meeting, regular meeting to order for March 26th, 2024. This meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. This meeting was included in the annual notice of the meeting schedule set forth in Resolution R23-277, adopted by the Town Council at its regular meeting of November 21st, 2023, advertising the official newspaper on December 21st, 2023, December 28th, 2023, and January 4th, 2024, posted on the bulletin boards outside the municipal building and has remained continuously posted there. In addition, a copy of the annual notice is available and has been unavailable, has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the Township Clerk. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk. Well, Councilor Cummings. Present. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Present. Councilor Price Abrams. Present. Councilor Russo. Present. Councilor Schlager. Here. Councilor Terry. Here. Mayor Spiller. Present. Uh, first, we'll move the agenda without, uh, with flexibility. Um, next, I'd like to uh, approve the minutes that have been presented to the Council, the minutes of March 12, 2024. I so move. Second. Are there any corrections, modifications, changes? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we'll also uh, move next to our uh, pending ordinances. We have pending ordinance 02407, which is an ordinance to amend 02007, which is creating certain offices, positions, employments in the Township of Montclair, County of Essex, and fixing the salary range thereof. And I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Without objection, I'm going to open the hearing to the public. Is there objection? Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, I'll close the hearing. Any additional comments? Questions? Seeing none. Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? No. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Okay. Uh, next, I'd like to go to a proclamation. And if we could ask uh, Councilwoman uh, Price Abrams and Councilwoman Schlager, would you mind? Sure. Pleasure. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, the proclamation for Women's History Month 2024. Whereas American women of every race, class, and ethnic background have been instrumental in building our nation in countless recorded and unrecorded ways, and whereas American women have played a unique role throughout the history of the nation by providing the majority of the volunteer labor force of the nation, playing a particularly important part in the establishment of charitable, philanthropic, and cultural institutions, as our society evolved over time, American women have played and continue to play critical economic, cultural, and social roles in every sphere of American life and now constitute a significant portion of the labor force. This might making up over half of our nation's college graduates and nearly half of the workforce, too many women continue to feel the weight of discrimination on their shoulders as they face pay gaps, discrepancy in health insurance, or inadequate options for family leave. And whereas Women's History Month is a time to remember those who fought to make the freedom to fully participate in our society as real for our daughters as it has been for our sons. Visionary women met, marched, and mobilized to realize that freedom, creating a force that touched every community and took on the highest institutions. Their long fought movement finally succeeded in 1920 with the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, finally giving women the ability to vote. And whereas American women have been leaders not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also in the abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and the peace movement, all in an effort to create a more fair and just society for all. And? And whereas throughout our history, women have been among the patriots who have defended our land and liberty from every enemy. Many women have served in the military and occupations from pilot to nurse and in both peacetime and in war. The number of women serving in the military and thus the number of women veterans continues to grow and they continue to enrich our country and civilian life as they bring their skills and patri patriotism to bear in communities across America. And whereas despite these contributions, the role of American women in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching and study of American history. And whereas even having fully reached the White House in our Vice President, Kamala Harris, women are still not fully or adequate, adequately represented at the top tables of organizations and corporations, nor on local governing bodies or in state and national houses of government, and are therefore not being heard or listened to, leaving a woman's very important perspective unprecedented 
and with, when corporate policies and decisions on local, state, and federal laws are being made. And whereas Montclair community leaders are working to shine the spotlight on Women's History Month, celebrate women's empowerment, and focus on women in history who fought for our rights, whose lives changed the course of history. And now, therefore, the mayor and the council of this township of Montclair, New Jersey, do hereby proclaim March 2024 as Women's History Month in the township of Montclair. And I so move. Second. Hey, yeah, hey, without objection. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> to all of the women sitting here and listening as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Thank you. We should have a woman mayor in Montclair. And uh, I, we will. I think we've got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next, we're going to go to uh, Vision Zero for their presentation. So I'll ask uh, Vision Zero to come on forward. Hello? Is it working? Testing, testing. Awesome. Thank you everyone for having me tonight to talk about Vision Zero and given, giving you all our uh, spring update of the Vision Zero Task Force. Um, my name is Laura Torchio. I am the chair of the Vision Zero Task Force. Um, and I want to ask everyone to please hold all of your questions until the end. There's a lot of information here, so if you have a question, jot it down and we'll get to them at the end. Um, Montclair is not new to the idea of Saver Streets. I personally have been involved since 2002 when Bike and Walk Montclair was founded. Since then, Montclair has accumulated recommendations through years and years of public engagement, studies, and plans. Yet still here we are. We all witnessed the near misses, the injuries, and the fatalities of vulnerable roadway users in Montclair. Today, the types of recommendations listed in those studies and plans are not novel. Implementing them is not risky. In fact, improvements to biking and walking are supported by the Federal Highway Administration as proven safety countermeasures and are being implemented with great results in other communities throughout New Jersey. Um, today, I'm happy to be here to talk about how Montclair is taking proactive action through the Vision Zero Montclair Task Force. So let's meet the task force. Um, anybody who's on the Montclair Vision Zero Task Force, please stand up. Um, last May, the council unanimously <laughs> agreed to create a Vision Zero Task Force comprised of the mayor, council, department heads and staff, advisory groups, Essex County, Montclair Center bid, community groups, and representatives from each of the four wards. We officially launched in October and we have been meeting monthly since November 2023. Our vision is simple. Every person in Montclair has the right to travel safely each day without the risk of death or serious injuries on our roadways, no matter how or when they travel. Zero is the only acceptable number of deaths on our roadways. As a task force, we will be diligent about data-driven decision-making. We will implement proactive, not reactive, policies, procedures, and plans. We will work together to eliminate all traffic fatalities and severe injuries while increasing safe, healthy, and equitable mobility for all. To do this, we will utilize Vision Zero guidelines, safe system approach, complete streets guidelines, and proven safety countermeasures. Let's take a quick look at each of these. All right. Vision Zero is a traffic safety initiative that originated in Sweden in the 1990s and has since been adopted <clears throat> by many cities and countries around the world. 
The central principle of Vision Zero is the belief that traffic-related deaths and injuries are not inevitable and can be prevented through proper design, enforcement, and education. Montclair is joining many communities, counties, and the state of New Jersey in implementing Vision Zero. Zero is the goal. A safe system is how we'll get there. Rather than focusing on changing human behavior and preventing all collisions, the safe system approach developed by the Federal Highway Administration focuses on transportation system design and operation on anticipating human errors and reducing impact forces to minimize crash severity and save lives. The six principles of the approach are fatalities and serious injuries are unacceptable. Humans make mistakes. Humans are vulnerable. Responsibility is shared. Safety is proactive and redundancy is crucial. Reducing risk, <coughs> risks requires that all parts of the transportation system are strengthened so that if one part fails, the other part still protects people. This graphic illustrates the redundancy is crucial principle of the safe system approach, showing how a safe system is designed such that if one part fails, there are redundant systems in place. In the Swiss cheese model, when the cheese slices act as successive layers of defenses and the holes are not lined up, a person is protected. The safe system approach also focuses on equity. Different populations have different <coughs> risk factors. Um, per the United States Department of Transportation National Roadway Safety Strategy, National traffic-related injuries disproportionately affect children, people with limited English proficiency, people with disabilities, senior citizens, as well as communities of color. Many of these groups regularly rely on non-automobile forms of transportation. Okay, this is a hands-up question for all of you and all of you. Who here has heard of Complete Streets? Good, a good number of you. Complete streets are designed, operated, and maintained with the safety and mobility and accessibility needs of all users of all ages and all abilities in mind. Whether we're in our car, or on foot, taking transit, or riding an e-scooter, complete streets will determine our comfort level. Elements of complete streets design include sidewalks, short crossing distances, lighting, narrow travel lanes, bike lanes, speed humps, and more. This is an example of complete streets um, <coughs> designed for users of all ages and abilities. As you can see, there's dedicated space provided for all users and all modes. But are all elements appropriate to everywhere? What do you think? No. no. No, the answer is no. A downtown is very different from a residential street or a regional connector, um, and it really depends on the context. So I want to ask you another question, all of you and all of you. Does Montclair have complete streets? Raise your hand if you think yes. Raise your hand if you think no. Oh, a lot of you aren't even raising your hands. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know what that means. Okay. So the Federal Highway Administration and the New Jersey Department of Transportation encourage counties and municipalities to adopt complete streets policies. Another question. Raise your hand if you think Montclair has a complete streets policy. Raise your hand if you think Montclair does not have a complete streets policy. Okay. Some un... un, some un uh, unconvinced, but um, Montclair does have a complete streets policy. Um, it was, Montclair was actually the first municipality in New Jersey to pass a complete streets policy in 2009. Yes, I agree with the applause. It was the first. <laughs> However, I will say that the Montclair complete streets policy is extremely weak. It's full of exceptions. It has no teeth, 
And that's why Montclair streets are not complete because our complete streets policy is weak. we need to make it stronger. So how do complete streets fit in with our Vision Zero discussion today? So here's the overlap. Complete streets address three of the five elements of the safe system approach. Safe roads, <coughs> safe road users, and safe speeds. And how do we know complete streets work? The Federal Highway Administration provides a library of low cost proven safety countermeasures, often low on cost but high on benefit. The key takeaway here is we are not starting from scratch and the solutions are documented and proven. To recap, this diagram shows that Vision Zero is the goal, zero deaths, safe systems approach is the strategy, and complete streets is the method for how we will get there. Okay, now a brief discussion on safe speeds. I know this has been a topic of the council for the last couple of months. We've been talking about speed, so I want to ask everyone up here and everyone out here um, a question. If you are driving an average car, right, how far does it take for you to reach a full stop? So driving at 30, uh, 30 miles per hour, how far does it take the average car to travel to reach a full stop? How many people think it's 10 feet? 25? 40? Okay. 70? 85? Okay, the answer is 85, 85 feet. So driving speed is the critical factor in crash severity and survival. Not only do stopping distances increase with speed, so does the risk of fatality. So please take a look at the graph on the right. At 20 miles per hour, if a pedestrian is struck, that person has only a 5% that person has a 5% risk of dying. At 30 or 40 miles per hour, the chance of survival declines dramatically. Driving speed also directly impacts drivers' ability to see pedestrians. The faster you're driving, the less you see in your field of vision. So if you drove here today, on your way home, please practice what does it feel like driving at different speeds? What if a good song is on the radio? What does stopping distance actually look like? Like how far is 85 feet? I don't know. Um, and what is your field of vision in, at various speeds? All right, here's another one. Here are six examples of different segments of one road in Ocean County. This, is, this happens to be Route 9, um, New Jersey Route 9. So if roadway designed and land use context influence driver speeds, what would you guess is the speed limit on each of these road segments? It's kind of a trick question. It might be hard to believe, but these examples vary signific significantly in the posted speed limit. Even though they're all pretty much look alike and are designed similarly. If we want drivers to slow down, we need more than just a speed limit sign. When our streets are designed for appropriate context, narrow lanes, bike lanes, parklets, shortened crosswalks, speed humps, gateways, roundabouts, street mur murals, et cetera, et cetera, speeds become self-enforcing. And finally, vehicle size is related to both speed and visibility. Uh, vehicle size, height, and weight have tended upwards in the last decade. Um, and the impl implica implications are that they take longer to stop, they hit higher on the body, they have large front blind spot, and therefore they are deadlier to pedestrians than average size cars. Vision Zero emphasizes data and data-driven decision making. And though we are looking at data and trends, we are talking about people with families, friends, communities, and lost futures. While our ultimate goal is to achieve zero deaths or serious injuries by the end of 2028, 
Our task force goals, as outlined in the resolution, are to revise Montclair's Complete Streets policy, develop a data-driven uh, Vision Zero action plan, create an open channel of communication, engage the public, and provide ongoing progress reporting. That's why I'm here. This is our strategic framework for how we plan to achieve these goals. We know our vision. We know our North Star outcomes. Phase one is our project launch. This is from October 2023 to March 2024 to today. Phase two is refining and recommending, and phase three is a plan for action. Um, the, next few <coughs> the next few slides, I'm gonna show some examples of the work that we're doing in each of these phases. Phase one, project launch. We are wrapping up phase one right now. Um, our communications working group has been developing a strategy for communication information and citizen involvement. Coming soon, we will have a website and social media, newsletters, piggybacking on municipal and community groups, newsletters as well, and a place for transparency for the task force, including ongoing progress reporting. And check it out, we have a logo with a simple and friendly look and feel developed by volunteer Sheena Livingston. And thank you, thank you to Sheena for providing us with the, our logo. Our data working group has collected and mapped five years of crash data. Um, and in, in GIS, Geographic Information System, we can layer many other data, including school zones, transit stops, demographic info, key destinations, street paving schedules, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this info will help us to pri prioritize when and where to make different street improvements throughout Montclair. In phase one, we had um, an alert to action working group, and we didn't know at the time that Montclair has a Montclair 311 or report it app. Um, so the purpose of the working group was to create a way to make sure traffic safety concerns were recorded and addressed promptly. We have a system to do that, which is really great. Um, however, when you click on street, road or street issues, the only two choices you have are pothole and street repairs and sidewalk issues. So we see this as an opportunity to get community input on transportation, walking, biking, and other concerns by adding elements to this app, like there's a crosswalk needed here, or there's not enough time to cross at this location, or the, the crossing signal is very confusing, or um, there's unsafe driving, speeding, or near misses observed at this location. So once these categories are added to the app, we will be conducting public outreach, a survey, and communicating the availability of this app for more frequent use throughout Montclair. Also in phase one, um, our Complete Streets Working Group has been hard at work reviewing Montclair's 2009 Complete Streets Policy and creating an updated version based on New Jersey DOT's 2019 Complete and Green Streets for All Model Policy and Guide. We have a final, thank you Amy for doing all that work on that. We have a final draft in circulation now and expect it to, uh, we expect to present it to council very soon. Phase two, is we're going to be getting into refining and recommending, recommending. Um, and demonstration projects are one of the things we're going to be working on. So demonstration projects are short-term, low-cost, temporary roadway projects used to pilot potential long-term design solutions to improve walking, bicycling, vehicle travel, and public spaces. These are great opportunities for testing and modifying street design ideas and getting community input during the process. In phase two, we will be conducting four demonstration projects. Here are some more examples of temporary demonstration projects that repurpose existing roadway space. They can be fun and colorful. They, are, they can be attention grabbing. They are visual cues that this is a place for people, not just a space to move and store cars. And they can be visual cues to pay attention and drive more slowly. And finally, further down the road, pun intended, phase three is our action plan phase. 
This will be a comprehensive plan based on Vision Zero goal, goals, safe system strategies, and complete streets methods and measures. <laughs> so let's get to our progress report. Our accomplishments so far um, are that we've completed most of phase one and some of phase two before we even got to phase two. So that's awesome. I'm very happy with the um, work that the, the task force has been able to do so far. Um, and I really look forward to meeting our goal. Um, and just a little bit more to share before we end the spring update. We wanted to get some feedback from the task force members. So at our last meeting, March, what was it, 8th, I think, um, we asked, how satisfied are you with the Vision Zero Montclair Task Force so far? And the results were that most are satisfied or very satisfied with the task force. We also asked, how satisfied are you with your role in the task force? And most feel good about their current role. In phase two, we're gonna be revising the working groups um, and we will be refining what we know and recommending how to move forward. And some more things you should know about. I would invite everybody to take a picture of this slide um, if you're interested. <clears throat> Tomorrow, Bike and Walk Montclair is holding a public forum on Vision Zero. Um, and so for more information, you can contact Bike and Walk Montclair. Um, there are several forums with the new candidates for council. Um, and they will be answering questions about various issues uh, regarding Montclair, but we definitely um, included some Vision Zero questions in those forums. So if you're interested in going to those, please do. And finally, the New Jersey Bike and Walk Coalition is holding a bike summit in May. Um, so if you are interested in learning anything about bike and walk initiatives in New Jersey, um, Vision Zero best practices, or Complete Streets implementation, you should definitely go. Registration is required. So I want to thank you for allowing me to part, uh, present our spring update. And I am here, and the other members of the task force are here to answer any questions anyone has. Thank you very much for the uh, presentation. Appreciate that, and certainly I know everyone's efforts. Uh, much appreciated and great to to hear you know the progress being made and and the conversations going on so want to thank you any questions uh, councilman price -Sabers? yeah laura i and and everyone who's serving you know i've participated to some degree and sort of that time permitting thing i i haven't been on as many calls as i i would like but i know that you know the the in-between role that i can play as a member of the council uh is where i'm my lane at the moment but i really just want to acknowledge and thank you and everybody who's participating because this is we, we've had many conversations over many years and so many of you probably have been involved with them in different kind of um, committees that existed and other things but this is i think the first time that there's this very thoughtful concerted effort with a model that's worked in other communities to to have that goal of zero and um you know these many threads of expertise coming together in a very structured way i've participated enough to see those things and i really just want to acknowledge and thank you and everybody so again an, an appreciation you know what we all we all want to see the real results and i was yeah. just with constituents on harrison avenue yesterday talking about safe crossing for children to get to school even if they have to take a bus on the other side of the road cars will run around the bus that's parked it's it's just we we have to figure out the strategies but i know that you're doing it in a very thoughtful and and meaningful way and i again acknowledge everybody who's uh, committed their time thank Thanks. you and it is really a big deal that this council unanimously voted to have this task force. So I thank you and we all thank you for that. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, Council, Councilman uh, Russo. Mayor, thank you. <clears throat> now, Laura, um, you know, I'm known Who's for talking? constituent response. It's me. Oh. <laughs> I'm known for. I hear it from here, but I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm Sorry. a voice in the clouds now. I'm just Your about ready to fade away. I, d I deal with constituents every day who call me about safety issues. So today, and I don't know if she's here, Kerry Doyle. Kerry is a mother in the fourth ward who's so upset and worried about Elmwood and down near Glenfield Park. And 
problems of, of children crossing. And then another mother from the first ward, Upper Montclair, is writing to me, Laura Almasi, and she's concerned that there's no crossing guards at the corner of Bellevue where the uh, Buzz Aldrin School is, and that the, you know, the people who deploy them, I don't think it's our police, it's, it's you know, semi government agency that deploys uh, the crossing guards, but she says for two weeks in a row there's no one there, so her kids are afraid to cross, whatever. So I get all these things and I pass them on to the manager, of course. I don't tell the police what to do. I can't get involved in this, but it really is something I told both of these residents, these mothers, that maybe they should go to see your task force and tell you some of these ideas. So is that, is that a best practice for me to refer them to you, or should I still just refer them to the town manager who has the authority? You should re refer them to the, the um, group that is responsible for crossing guards. So I think well, that's, that's one complaint. The other one was just the street problems generally. So, yeah, that's – but they got the answer that they just one didn't have a crossing that guard that day. See, it's bureaucracy. Let me just finish. It's bureaucracy. The woman got an answer she wasn't satisfied with. I sent it to Laura, the manager, and all. Still not satisfied. The point is your Vision Zero Task Force should hear from people like this. Exactly. I'm just saying is there a forum they can come to sometimes? I don't want to bother you directly, yeah. but – you have a meeting. Is it public? Is it something people like this could go to and just explain their frustration about a safe? It's a safety issue. One of the things that we want to do to get community input is to find um, a way to get uh, those concerns documented, mapped, and responded to. Um, we, when we first developed the task force. <clears throat> we created a working group called Alerts to Action because we didn't want people to have these um, concerns and not be responded to. We did find out that the Montclair 311 Report It app um, is a very good system for people to report their concerns and the concerns are then um, directed to the appropriate uh, staff, people, um, and then they reply um, and work on that. What One of the things we found that was lacking was that there wasn't a lot of information about traffic safety in that app, and that's what we're working on right now to get concerns for traffic safety more related to Vision Zero in that app. But that's going to be our process for getting people's concerns addressed um, through the town because the Vision Zero task force can't do anything for somebody's concerns. What we can do is we can look at the data and we can start to think about um, recommendations for different locations and priorities for uh, when and where improvements are made and that can be based on the data, the crash data that exists, that can be based on demographic data and that can be based on community input, um, but that community input has to come through some <coughs> means of us to be able to collect it. And so we think the best way is through the reported app and Montclair 311 if we get that um, a little more robust um, and related to safe, okay. safe streets. Thank you. If anybody calls you and says that I told them to call you, say, uh, you know Bob's a pain. Councilman Tur. I would never say that. Hey, Laura, great. Great presentation. Uh, Thank you, Roger. I was wondering, in some of the implementation of your plans, is, do you take in consideration for some of the seniors that don't ride bikes or walk around the community? Yes. Who is our person? Uh, Ellie, I think, is our person that represents the senior um, community. We have members on our task force that uh, <coughs> represent the senior community, disabled community, civil rights community um, and students yeah thank you all all of them they were on that one slide that had all those like things listed that you couldn't read because it was too small um, but yes everything that we do as a ta every recommendation we make as a task force will be considered by all of the different groups and they will weigh in Thank you, Laura, for everything um, that you've done it and your group. I saw, I did read that, I believe it was Hoboken, that
that has Vision Zero, and over a course of three years, they've eliminated all. There's been no fatalities. There's been their crashes have gone way down. Do you? Um, is there a group? Do Do all of you get together at some point? The Vision Zero towns and cities to yes. share best practices and report on things? I'm going to have my friend Deb answer that question. <laughs> yes. The Vision Zero Alliance. Um, there, there's a New Jersey Vision Zero Alliance, which is a statewide organization that represents um, a place where all of the different organizations, um, municipalities can participate and share Cummings. Uh, so far, I want to thank you. And also, do you have a website or some place where I can send residents who share with us their concerns? Because all I've been telling them is you should reach out to the Vision Zero Task Force if you have some place, something that I can give them in my response. We are getting there. Okay, we are so when there. you. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a web page, which will be part of the Montclair Township, Montclair Township website. And that'll have an address that I can send constituents to directly? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's We're awesome. We're working on it momentarily. It's going to be momentarily. Okay, so when that's up, please yeah. let us know. We will, we will be uh, very diligent in sharing that information. That's, Two other that's questions. just my point. Excuse that was me, Bob. my point. Two other questions. <laughs> One, you mentioned the national traffic study that you're looking into. Does that go down to where you have something from New Jersey? Good question. I don't know the answer to that, but the national study does include all state data, so I'm going to say yes, but I will look into it a little more. Okay. And then the final one, it's real easy. Um, I'm assuming at some point you'll be able to tell us the money and the cost that will be associated with this, and which I'm hoping with, with your phases, you have any idea of which phase that will come out? So I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but I can say that um, the demonstration projects involve things like paint, cones, hay bales, um, planters, things no, the, like that. So, so the question is, at, at what point do you think you'll be able to present that to the count or to the manager and the council to see what that will take to pay for? Yeah, That's so all. we will be looking at four demonstration projects in the next six months. So we will have, uh, we will look at costs for those things. And, and municipal staff will help us look at costs for those things as well. All right, thank you. Yeah. All yeah. I wanted to say, Mayor, was that if you need resources, which I brought up many, many times at past meetings, I kept asking, do we give you enough? Do you have enough? Has the manager released money? It all comes down to resources for you to do the job, as Councillor Cummings asked, where do people go to? So I just want to see a place where people can go and get help. And if you need more money to do that. I 
I'm going to look at, I'm looking at a, a pal of mine in the audience. Yeah. We currently have $4,000 to do some things. Yeah. So there's a what? That's, that's true. There is um, a grant that Montclair has received um, called the Safe Streets for All grant that will cover some demonstration projects, but probably further down the road because the, the contract will take at least a year or several months to, to complete. Am I, I'm looking at Janice to like, confirm what I'm saying. Uh, I rest my case. Any other questions? Well, again, thank you so much. Appreciate the efforts and the work, and uh, we all look forward to the work together. So thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. All right, with that, I'm going to open up to public comment on agenda items. If there's an, en ag an agenda item you wish to make a comment on, uh, please come up, state your name, uh, address, and the agenda item with which you wish to make a comment on, and then you will have two minutes. Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward. Hi there. My name is Anne Lapel. I've been living in Montclair for 45 years, and I welcome this opportunity to speak to you. I've been here before, but never on this particular subject. Lackawanna Plaza has been undeveloped for, I think, 10 years, maybe more, and it is a prime piece of real estate that can be, can be used for so much good for our township. Housing is not only an issue uh, across New Jersey, but it's a very real issue for Montclair's older homeowners who want to age in place. In countless surveys that our organization has conducted, seniors have reported that they are currently overburdened by property taxes, and if they had some other local housing options available, they would prefer to age in this community and not uproot themselves from familiar streets, from friends, and from houses of worship. And the federal government has actually confirmed that medical results for aging in place are best when you stay in your community. If we care about age diversity, and if we care about economic diversity, let us agree that the opportunity to allocate 20% of the project at Lackawanna Plaza to affordable housing and 10% to workforce housing is an excellent outcome for maintaining Montclair's diversity. I fully support the project and the decision making of our professional staff to apply the necessary due diligence to get this project done right. Let's keep our eyes on the greater good for all of Montclair. Please vote yes on Lackawanna. Thank you. Good evening. What happened? I thought everything was handled perfectly the last time you passed the Lackawanna Redevelopment Plan. Perhaps tonight's redo of that resolution is actually an admission that this was not really the case, that you blew it. And so one now has to ask why. What's really going on here? Is this an attempt to just remedy some of the poor process that many of us recognized and told you you were all doing at the time? Is it an attempt to cover up some unlawful actions that may have been hidden and to prevent legal discovery from proceeding so they don't get revealed when you eventually try to dismiss the lawsuits against you? Because the township has not even answered either of the two formal legal complaints yet for its poor handling of this Lackawanna process. And that means Montclair is likely in legal default of those court mandated time periods, even with extensions granted. So 
aren't you really just wasting more of the taxpayers' money tonight by not playing by the rules and now trying to get around them? Who are you covering up for? But let's not get into that because if the court will eventually address those issues, just like they have in the CFO case, thank, and thank so you. we'll get into that as we get to the taxpayer fiscal concerns. Thank you. Um, my name is Susan Craig. Um, I uh, have been the uh, chair of the Senior Roundtable, Transportation Roundtable, and uh, when I hear people say uh, there's not a uh, food desert in town, I, I think of two things. Um, one, either they have an unlimited number of Uber rides uh, in addition to the car they have in the garage, um, or they don't live in the third and the fourth ward. Because I know from the transportation um, town system that we have in town for senior citizens, and thanks to all of you for the most liberal policy that we do have now that allows people 20 rides to get anywhere in town, anywhere in Essex County. Um, and it's not to say that we're not all grateful for that improvement. However, that's 20 rides a month or 10 rides, round trip rides. So what that means for somebody who lives in the third or the fourth ward is they have to balance their rides between medical appointments, opportunities for recreation, and food shopping. And I have been at a meetings where people have said to me, I'm down to my last two rides. Um, I need to go grocery shopping. I need to pick up medicine. How am I going to do this? So I, too, am urging you to vote yes on the Lackawanna Plaza. We need a grocery store. And I don't know what kind that would be. I just know that people need to have a grocery store within their ability to walk there, to get there, to use either public transportation or one of their 20 rides. It's very important to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Leslie Butler and I live in Montclair. I came out tonight to ask you to vote yes on the ordinance on Lackawanna Plaza. As I understand it, this will bring the plan back to the planning board for review and then back to the council. In other words, it will move the project forward. I would like to see this project move in this direction. The fact that the owner is a member of our community gives us a unique advantage of having a developer who understands our town and what is important to us as a community. I ask that all parties work together and negotiate in good faith because that will make this a better project. Please vote yes to move this project forward. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carol Schlein. I live at 168 Midland. Um, I'm also here in support of moving forward on Lackawanna Plaza. No plan will be perfect, but I believe the current plan does a good job of preserving the history while bringing back a badly needed grocery store and revitalizing the area. I'm down that way a lot because for, as co-president of the Women's Club, we bank at TD Bank, and every time I go through that parking lot, it's like there are trucks and Christmas, like it's just a really poor use of space, badly needed space. Um, the affordable housing commitment in this plan is also commendable. The people nearby have been without a grocery store for years, a decade at this point. So more than anything, progress has to be made. I urge you to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is David Corfidge. I live at 58 Tuxedo Road. Um, I've spoken about this before, so I will just be very brief, but just to rehash some points I've made. From an affordability standpoint, study after study has shown that new development tends to keep prices down or at least uh, keeps them from rising as fast. And also given the cost of land in Montclair, the only way to board build affordable housing is to have it subsidized by market rate housing. All that together means that building new housing in Montclair is a key way to keep 
help keep housing prices from rising so rapidly, Lackawanna Plaza would help with that. Um, from a sustainability standpoint, the crisis of climate change is growing, as headlines show, and building dense housing near public transit, like the proposed development, is one of the key things that cities and towns can do to address climate change. It's highly recognized by, by climate scientists around the world. The proposed development will also promote walkability, another key climate policy that city and, and towns can undertake. Um, in short, the proposed development of Lackawanna, based on the evidence we have, would make Montclair both greener and more affordable. Um, it's been a long time coming. I would love to see it happen. I live not far and would love to be able to walk to a grocery store from my, where I live on Tuxedo Road. So I hope you will vote in favor of the development. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Scott Ketty, uh, Valley and Watchung. Um, I understand there has been eh, with the traffic study, and that's what I'd like to address. Uh, Pre-pandemic, there were 4,000 folks, or sorry, households on uh, SNAP. I, I let my um, peers deal with that. But Mary DeFilippis, Maya Mayer, Samson Hum, Maria Delaire's Ascenso, Zeon Brooks, I, I would ask the town manager, do you know who those folks are? How about Vivian uh, Folk and Flick? We also have Tim Hughes, Aaron Minkoff. All of the above six died in Montclair due to traffic. How we can have 60 intersections identified when Yacobellis was here, probably more. And if we put a development like this, this is a New York City development. We are a town, not a city. How about we focus on our people? Robin, you ran and got that seat based on safety. How about passing Vision Zero and actually giving them money? This is your last days in here. And your, your town manager doesn't even know the people that die. Hoboken has had zero, zero deaths in seven years. We've had six. What are you gonna say to their families? Who's going to the next funeral? And if we put Lackawanna up, which you're making me speak to, because I have kids at home that I have to get back to, we're gonna have more. That, that's, have you walked around that area? Has anyone? Have you walked out front? We don't even have lines in front of this town hall. They've so many cars have gone on the wrong side of the road that they're gone. In fact, one came over the road and almost hit me on the way here. So I would ask, can we please start to address traffic? And today, we had, no, we had two crossing guards call out at Buzz. One of them, absolutely empty corner. Another, the cop was in the car. I had to watch a kid cross with my hand on the horn, hoping to heck she didn't get hit. This is, we've got, how can we be focusing with leaving traffic and safety? Yeah, it's secondary. Let's build, 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 build. Yes, we need a grocery store there. I'm the first one to agree. Uh, it's, it's a desert, and those 4,000 households need it sourly. But can we take safety? And Mr. Spiller, you're gonna carry this on your career. Thank you. Pass the ordinance. Thank you. I hope it lives with you. Um, good evening, I'm Rachel Quinn Egan. In uh, 2018, the Environmental Commission advised or get, told us that we had a great opportunity to daylight and remediate Tony's Brook. Um, in the 80s, it was culverted, put underground, um, and that was a really big mistake. As you can see, we have an awful lot of flooding in front of the high school just last weekend, flooded really horrifically. Um, we, we, we are suffering now from flooding on a regular basis. Um, a lot of this is down to the fact that we have not taken care of our waterways. Most of the world is now working on this. Um, I believe there are federal funds for uh, remediating and looking after our waterways. I think it's really important. And I think it's really important now as you go back to look at this plan that you think once again about this brook that sometimes turns into a wild river in certain places because it hasn't been cared for. Also, your last um, planning board, uh, the planning committee already said that so many parts of this plan were not correct, were not right. Um, why can't we just work with that report? That was a great report. It was very well thought through. They spent hours and hours and hours on it. I don't understand why it's going back to another one, unless it's because you think that those people are going to be friendlier about this. Um, there is going to be way too much traffic. It's way too tall. It's definitely going to bring a lot more pollution. And we could really do, and we all agree that we want something there. It's just too big, too much, and we would really benefit from looking at the environment and taking care of the waterway, and also looking at how this massive project is going to affect 
gentrification in our town. So please, just, just take the advice of the, the, the report you've already received and really take a good look at it and try to work with that and then come up with a new plan. Please don't go back again to another and waste more time with the planning, a new planning board. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good evening. It's good to see you all. Uh, my name is Peter Keating. I've lived on Lincoln Street in the fourth ward for going on 20 years. My wife and I have probably sent our two daughters to school there. Um, as you all consider the redevelopment plan for Lackawanna, I'd like all of us, whether you're office holders now or will be in a couple of months or just concerned citizens, to, uh, to reset. I think it's time to look forward and to move forward together. There's been an incredible and disturbing level of vitriol over this issue for months and months. I think we should all remember two basic facts. Where I live, our community has been without a supermarket for years and years. And where I live, a huge structure has stood largely abandoned, rotting, and leaking for years and years. These things matter at a fundamental level. Um, we need to keep working not just to fix those specific facts, but to remedy what allowed them to develop and persist in the first place. For one thing, everybody on all sides of this fight says they support more affordable housing. Well, we should work now to keep the promise of delivering affordable housing at Lackawanna and help keep alive the idea of focusing on affordable housing throughout the town. I mean, let's start talking about how to make sure developer commitments to affordable housing go to building affordable housing and not just to cash infusions that turn out to be temporary budget boosts. We should be talking now about how to hold the new supermarket tenant avail uh, acceptable uh, and, and, and accountable as a community partner. Look, Pathmark was terrible. I don't know how many of you dealt with them, but they were not good to the people who worked there or shopped there, who lived near there. We need to work with whoever's coming to make sure they provide good jobs to people in our community and pro-union pro union and apprenticeships point. Yes, yeah, and support right? food security yeah. programs um, These are just a couple of ideas, but the point is this has always been more about the process arguments and the logistics arguments that have dominated so much of our public discussion Still time to do some good here. Let's not keep relitigating. Let's look forward. Thank you. Thank you Mayor, I want to answer Mr. Keating. I want to answer Mr. Keating on the, the nature of the supermarket. You know, everybody says they want a supermarket grocery store. I have never, I cannot believe that at a recent meeting I was at, somebody comes out and says, oh, we're going to get a Trader Joe's. I said, would you hear that? <laughs> and prior to that, Councilman Cummings mentioned that we were going to get Amazon months ago. Now, I know Mr. Placic, wonderful man. Mr. Placic has told me he cannot discuss the contract he has, okay, with a supermarket. I understand all that. I'd love to see shop or whatever. But the one thing I want to see, as you were referring to good jobs, and all, is a, a, not an anti-union supermarket, okay? Now, some of you may, may not like unions. You may not be a union member. I went to jail for the teacher strike in Newark 50 years ago as, as a union member trying to get a little tiny increase from $5,000 to $8,000 for teachers to start working in 1969. So I am not going to support anything that comes in here that is not a pro-union or a union-friendly supermarket. I just wanted to make that statement. So that's one of my reservations. Thank you. Uh, I'm Arielle Ekstad at 316 Park Street. So why is there a new ordinance regarding Lackawanna Plaza? When I saw it, that was the question I asked myself. The last time an ordinance was passed on Lackawanna, I remember a council person assuring everyone in the room that as a Montclair resident, he would be perfectly happy to lose parking in front of his house on Grove Street in order to create a speedway into the project. That council person quit the council and left town two days later. Obviously, that was a disingenuous sentiment, and who doesn't want the largest project in Montclair history to be shrouded in disingenuousness? And clearly, the council doesn't want to. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here right now. Despite all the assertions that this project was on the up and up, here we are having a redo. 
I'll take this redo as an admission that what was done was not done properly. What is sad and wrong is that this cleanup is not being appropriately handed off to a new council that will be voted on in May. Save for Councilman Russo, not one of you is running, yet you continue to back this developer-led project that was created behind closed doors and without proper community input. A project that our planning board voted six to one not to approve as it stands. Additionally, you've now replaced two of the people who are on that planning board that voted no. Lackawanna presents a unique and once in a lifetime opportunity to create a space for our residents, a special space. Please have the decency to let the new council decide whether this project should move ahead as is. What a wonderful thing it would be to have a community-led plan that is in the interests of all our residents and not just a select few. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, I'm Jenny Sowers. I live on Stonebridge Road. Um, I just wanted to come and support the Lackawanna pro project in that, you know, I'm really repeating what I've heard so many times here tonight about this addresses so many of the needs of our community in terms of uh, clearly we have a, f a food desert in the lower end of town. Um, it provides a lot of green space, restoring, um, you know, some historical preservation of the buildings um, that maintain, um, you know, the, the significance of our history as a community and I really think you know when we when we talk about what the community is looking for this project checks so many of the boxes that residents have been talking about for a really long time so just wanted to lend my support tonight thank you thank you, thank thank you. you. good evening how you guys doing good well. uh, I don't have anything prepared but I'm a relatively new resident to Montclair. My name's Kyle Wright. I live at 242 Grove Street. Um, I think you got, I think everyone has heard, you know, the sentiments of everyone here this evening, and I'm sort of in agreement with them as well. I don't know the history of why it's stopped and paused, but I'm here to hopefully persuade you guys to vote yes on Lackawanna. That's all. It's important to know the history, by the way. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, Mike Fitzgerald, 31 Madison. Uh, I've been a Montclair resident for more than 15 years and a homeowner in the fourth ward. I appreciate the council getting us together to further discuss Lackawanna Plaza. It's, it's time to recognize the importance and absolute need to move ahead now. Your truly local leaders like David uh, Playsick are rare and shouldn't ever be taken for granted. The fourth ward, fourth ward certainly needs this project to be launched. And I bought my home in the fourth ward three, uh, in anticipation of a new Lackawanna Plaza at the centerpiece to our community. Uh, finally, understanding that many of the council members are not seeking re-election, I want to thank you for your work and support for this project. And hopefully we'll all look back on this project as one of the uh, crowning achievements of this council and of this town. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening, my name is Diane Tyree Anglin. I live at 158 Orange Road in Montclair. <laughs> I come here as a Montclair resident, someone who can you know, walk to Lackawanna Plaza, um, live there all my life, but I do live in Montclair. So I think my opinion counts because I live in Montclair. Um, Lackawanna Plaza, I don't know why we're here either. I have come here before and said, oh, no way. We got oh, we I got was going to say, uh, discrimination. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I've come here before and I've made it very clear that I support Lackawanna Plaza. I've always been against people that come up here and try to disrespect the uh, developer and call names and everything like that. There's people on the dais who also are for Lackawanna Plaza, but behind closed doors will say, oh, Dave is a good guy, I'm for Lackawanna, all I want is a, a different supermarket, but um, come here and vote no. Let's, let's all be honest, we don't have to be scared of the people who come up here with lawsuits and all that other kind of stuff. 
The fourth ward needs beautification. We do not need that eyesore anymore. It is going to be beautiful. Tony's Brook runs behind my house. I don't know how many people care that, you know, that's flooding and doing things around there. You know, you know uh, my wonderful third ward council person. But listen, this is not about Tony's Brook. If it was, people would have been up here in the 90s or 2000s here. You know, we're just reaching for different things to complain about. Lackawanna Plaza is going to be great. The Plasics live in this town, and they're going to love to see it and be a part of it. It's going to um, affordable housing, if you heard it from our state legislators, is something that is mandated. We just don't have the um, buildings in place. So let it happen. Thank you very much. And I live in Montclair. <laughs> But do you live in Montclair? That's the okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so with that, I'm going to close uh, the, close the public comment. Thank you very much to everybody for, for offering your your thoughts and opinions on that. Uh, with that, we will move to the agenda. Um, I'll ask my colleagues too to look through all the agenda items that follow. I'll move them uh, in blocks. So if you've got ones you want to hold out, just mark them now, note them. Uh, but first one that I'll move is Ordinance 02409, which is ordinance to approve. I'd, are we going to revisit the conversation on Lackawanna? Yeah, moving it right now. Okay. Ordinance 02409, which is ordinance to approve the redevelopment plan for uh, Lackawanna Plaza in the township of Montclair, which is superseding, repealing, and replacing the adopted ordinance 02, uh, 02229. I so move. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Burr, would you like to speak to, uh, would you please speak to uh, the rationale? We heard the question here. Someone asked before, so you could, could you please articulate? I know it's a, in a lot of the whereas is, et cetera, but if you can succinctly uh, note why we are here tonight, and uh, I think you'll <coughs> capture it for, for all those listening and certainly those who may have asked the question here tonight. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mayor, as everyone's aware, uh, the ordinance is being moved, moved by advice of council or outside council. Uh, suggested that we move it due to the costly and expensive and timely litigation that is currently going on. Yep. You got um, the township, uh, as, as we're aware, the township adopted 02922 in the Lackawanna redevelopment plan in October. The ordinance and redevelopment plan has been tied up in litigation based on claims that include allegations of conflict of interest and claim notice and procedural defects. As I am sure you can understand, um, litigation like this costs towns and their citizens expensive and time, time that can be better spent moving the town and the redevelopment plan forward. While we believe that the township got it right the first time, to avoid these unnecessary delay and litigation costs, we are going to consider the ordinance and redevelopment anew so we can put forth the best plan for the township and the redevelopment of Lackawanna Plaza area. And that way, the plan, if approved this time around, can stand on its own merit. Okay. So those are the reasons, Mayor. Well, spe specifically that, Mr. Burr, do you have any advice? I know one of, it, one of them was uh, somebody who potentially had a conflict who's not here. Per so perceived that, that con that. conflict. Perceived right. conflict. Secondary, anything else in terms of recusal or anything else that anyone should well, at that point? Yeah, well, based on the October uh, 10th, 2023 public hearing, um, Councilman Russo had indicated that uh, he might have a conflict of interest and he uh, talked about it and um, it was it might be a perceived conflict of interest so based on advice of the law department and reviewing that uh, we had a conversation with Mr. Russo and indicated that if he believed that he had a conflict or even if he didn't believe he had a conflict but there was a perceived conflict of interest we said, when in doubt, sit it out. There's no reason to partake in the vote, and he could recuse himself. That way, again, uh, any unnecessary and costly litigation that may occur as a result of his partaking in the vote would be avoided. So, but the decision is up, is, is his, lies, lies with him. Thank you. Okay, I've just been moved um, and seconded. Any questions, concerns, comments? For my colleagues, I, I will, by the way, keep mine very brief. They will remain exactly what they were in the countless uh, years of conversations we've had around this and the first time we moved this through, um, and I will be supporting it for the same reason. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
so from the beginning I had concerns about the plan when it comes to affordable housing and one of the recommendations that I would like to put forward here which I believe the developer would support is the elimination of the um, workforce housing and instead 5% goes to seniors and 5% will be afforded to veterans so we keep the 20% affordable and instead of the 10% workforce which has not been used at any development that we have so far can be replaced by 5% of a um, for seniors and 5% for veterans at a rate that would be considered around 30% of their their income that is one suggestion the other suggestion which may be a little bit more problematic and um, Ms. Talley and I have had a conversation that again that the developer has developed has said that there was some potential support was was looking at and adding surface parking um, more surface parking and the location on the western parcel of land because at the end of the day TD Bank which um, some people here said they vote at is losing all of its parking and it will be have you have to go to a parking deck and not be able to walk directly in there so those were two things that I um, actually said that I feel like for me to be interested in supporting this plan those are two things that I would like to put forward to this council to consider and then I want to also talk about when it comes to you know we talk about how the impact well one impact of this is I look at the Montclair Neighborhood Development Corporation uh, the oldest social service agency in this town has been around since 1968 was at 228 Bloomfield Avenue for over 55 years well the owner of that property which was paying two thousand dollars a month of rent told them two years ago that your rent will be thirty two hundred dollars the question was why and it was given to him because the impact of Lackawanna Plaza development last year they came to them and he said that he wanted to increase it to thirty six hundred dollars so MNDC had to leave its property and now they're on Woodland and Maple Avenue so that is a social service agency so when we talk about the impact and what it will bring to us that is a severe impact and we need to look at that I did have a question for Ms. Talley um, in regards to the elimination of parking on the street from Union to on 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 our I mean, uh, Elm Street from Union to Bloomfield Avenue is that still in effect Uh, good evening the plan does not call specifically to el eliminate parking in that area the plan requires the developer to do a traffic impact study at the time that these they come in for site plan approval and at that point we will determine exactly what improvements are necessary to ensure appropriate traffic flow now granted when we did do the traffic analysis in preparation for this plan one of the mitigations uh, one of the the measures proposed to mitigate traffic was to eliminate parking um, and I don't, I don't know offhand how far back it is on Elm Street but towards the school correct right towards towards the school so that we would have uh, enough lanes of traffic uh, for cars to to get through that intersection in a timely and an efficient manner and the same was considered for Grove Street from Glenridge Avenue to Walnut. That was one of the mitigation me measures that was proposed as part of the traffic Not impacts. Bloomfield, Glenridge okay. Avenue. Well, if you look at Bloomfield or Glenridge Avenue, there is no parking there right now. So I'm talking about where residents live because the other issue there is you eliminate parking on Glenridge, on, if you eliminate parking on Grove Street from Glenridge Avenue to Walnut Street, there are a lot of apartment buildings, there are a lot of homes there and therefore you're eliminating friends from coming what we're doing is we're going to either force them to park on Grove Terrace or around the corner on Clover Hill and well really saying hey go park in a parking deck and so if I were to go visit a friend and that things and then God forbid if there is a funeral at Caggiano where normally people park there so those are two those are three of the things that I brought up that I thought that we need to the the main thing for me though also was that we follow the process and we are here because we did not follow the process properly number one 
we all we had to do, and I hope we have, according to what I've read in this plan, it says the new plan. So in the new plan that we have now, have we addressed the planning board's concerns in the plan? The plan that was presented, we haven't made any changes to the plan. The plan that was presented is the same plan that was submitted, uh, I believe, in, in October. Um, so there have been no changes to that plan. We so did why are we calling it the new redevelopment plan? I, I don't know. I don't okay, know. Okay, that's, I'm just, because this isn't, listen, I'm conflicted here because I know the benefits that this plan will provide the township. But I also know that this council failed in its process, which we all know because that's what we received from our attorneys, and the conflict of interest issue. And so the reality is that really we should not be even looking at this. It should go to the next council. For the same, for the, for the main reason, for the main reason that we had plenty of time to do this right the first time, we didn't. We're going to have 45 days to get this to the planning board. By the time that gets back, the new election will have occurred. And that we're, we're saddling the future council with our mistake. And that's not fair. Now, I'm not speaking to you directly. I'm, I'm saying no, no, this is what, and for those who on the council who believe that the perceived conflict of interest goes away, I have issues with that based on the fact that I know how involved that person was in the writing of this plan. Yes. So, and this is nothing against Mr. Place. He cannot get along, and, I, and he knows where I stand on this. This is nothing new to him or you. But I think we need to stop acting as if what we did wasn't wrong. We were wrong. The question, Counselor, Counselor, Her, Counselor Herlock asked the question, are we passing this procedurally properly? And he was told yes. Well, if that's the case, we wouldn't be here now. And now, that's, those are the facts. Because we're here again, and this isn't a new plan. If you're telling me this, because it says new plan, when one of the things that we said publicly is that all we have to do is address in the plan why we're not accepting the, the, the planning board's recommendations. We that, could verbally saying it is not putting it in the plan. So now, we said, when we send this to the planning board, if they come back with recommendations, we now know that we have to put in the plan why we may not accept any of their recommendations. That's incorrect. Well, it does not go in the plan. This, the, the local housing and redevelopment law does state that the council can override the recommendations of the planning board and they have to state on the record their reasons for differing. That's not in the plan. Okay, on the so record can be either in a report, could be in your resolution, could be in the minutes. We did have a lot of testimony. I submitted a report uh, to, the, to the council when it was introduced, the previous plan, identifying every single item that the planning board had come. So you had the information. I think it's, the question is, um, and I think the process was correct. It was how it was documented. And I think that's, well, okay. That's where we are. Well, let me chime in. It, the, the process was procedurally correct. Is your mic Everything, on? yes, my mic is on. Everything was done correctly. Uh, the reason why this is being reintroduced at this time is because of the perceived conflict of interest. Oh. We are trying to avoid the of costly no the, of so someone who is no longer sitting here. And we are trying to avoid the time, costly expense of litigation. It's, it's widely believed that we'll be successful, that the perceived conflict of interest will not uh, be, will not, um, be deemed to have influence negatively influence the ordinance however the cost and the time that it's going to take to litigate that issue is going to be a great expense to the town so are you telling me that i did not hear tell I, us. Let, let me let me first say to you mr cummings that things that are said in executive session by our attorneys is attorney client privilege and you alone don't have the right to waive well, the township's privilege. But you, I will you, take, you would I need will take four people. Hit. You would need you need four people Paul. to 
to waive that, Paul, to I waive that conflict. That. And I disagree and with what I you're will, about I'll, to say. I'll understand that, but I know there's a reason why we're here, and everybody up here knows that what you just said is not what we were told. Yeah, that's true. And that's why we're here, because there was a, as he said to us, and there's a reason why we had this plan on here before, and we did not pass it properly. And that's why we're doing okay. it again. Any other council comments? As I said, well, I, I, as I, 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 said I disagree with Mr. you. Mr. Burr, I appreciate that's that. Fine. Let's, uh, we have I do have two, to but I do too. have two recommendations that I put forward to be included in this plan. That goes to the affordable housing, eliminating workforce and giving affordable housing for seniors and veterans, mm -hmm. which the developer has seemed to support as well as the surface parking. So that's, that's something I would like to have included. And you, you made a motion. Plan. Is there a second? There's a motion to do that. I'll second it. It's moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, call the question. On the amendment. On the amendment. Just the amendment, just so that we're clear. Correct. Because I still have a question. Then. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Harlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? No. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? No. Councilor Terry? No. Mayor Spiller? No. Fails. Back to the main motion. Councilwoman uh, Price yeah, You don't want to add this nice thing that he's offering that okay, the, even the developer might have. Uh, oh, yeah, Price you have the you. mic. Yes, I do. It's For another turn. couple of months. Correct. And while it's I'm not, sitting here, rude. I would respect you and you should respect me. Let's just be clear. I want to. Thank you. I would like to go back. Um, what I found were the notes that I read uh, in my comments when we passed this uh, back on 10 10 23. I was happy I found them because they captured what I wanted to say and frankly they did put into the record and I believe what we failed to do was to have written them up in the way that Mr. Burr just described. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reread them. First of all, I want to point out that this is the plan of the council. It is a draft based on the work of our planner Janice Talley from the previously negotiated plan from years ago. It was reworked with a new sense of vision from members of this council and from the redeveloper, as well as with input from the planning board, the HPC, and many, 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 I added some of those, hours of public comment, input, and visioning that has taken a period of years. For that reason alone, we have done a lot of work and we believe this plan should move, which is why we are purporting to move it forward tonight. The planning board and the HPC um, on that topic their appropriate deference to preserving and helping to tell the story of Montclair is valued and commendable, and I thank them all for their service. And I do thank them, and I acknowledge that there's been much accommodation to the many of their excellent ideas in that regard. From earlier iterations, the buildings, as we've discussed, have been made smaller, more sculptured, especially the eastern-facing buildings um, who face certain neighbors along Bloomfield Avenue, that they should have a more appropriate <coughs> vista as they look at the project. Um, especially where Tony's Brook crossed the property. There was, um, the building will not be sitting literally on top of that so that if there's a need to get access to the water underneath into that area, there won't be a physical building sitting on it. And that was something that was another uh, adaptation to an earlier version. More open space has been added to the footprint and accommodations for more ground level parking was included to accommodate those requests while preserving the ability to use the open area for programmable community space. That's such an element of what the, develop, the redeveloper and the council together deemed important. The historic waiting room, an historic asset of the township now found on private property deserves some degree of deference. In fact, that space will be limited to events, exhibitions, and similar uses, helping to use it for continuing education about the history and allowing it to have a place in the future. Further, adaptive reuse of certain structures as well as measures to ensure sight lines to the historic waiting room have been refined. If you recall, standing on certain ports where, where you don't have as much of the blocking and um, the building on the eastern corner of Grove Street and Bloomfield Avenue has been set back in different ways so that we would have better sight lines. So all of these have been with listening, with consideration of the objectives, which are multifaceted. So I am confident that all of these elements with the historic waiting room and everything else will be woven into effective signage to help tell the story of the place that was. But we are rightful, rightly mindful to shift our gaze out toward the future, the needs and wishes of people today and tomorrow when we make a plan of this scale and significance. And from some of the commentary tonight and, and hours and hours of commentary we've heard over many months, 
we will be accommodating many people's needs and aspirations. So we have sought to balance a number of the key wants when setting priorities for this property. Clearly, first on most lips was to build a modern full-service supermarket that is walkable to a great swath of the population in the third and fourth wards to address what has been designated as a food desert by the state of New Jersey. Open space is a valued asset, one that is in scarce supply in the downtown business district. The pockets of open space interspersed with elements from our history will be a welcome addition to the quality of life for people living, working, shopping, or strolling through this revitalized part of the downtown community. Affordable housing. While I share the wishes that we might have added even more affordable housing to this plan, I recognize that the council secured many benefits for the community, and I'm advised that the feasibility of meeting the 20% standard obligation, not undertaken by any other recent redevelopment projects, which have been done at 10%, is financially challenging, only more so. We've ensured that all levels of affordability are represented from very low income households to those deemed moderately low income. And then we added another category for the 10% more workforce housing. These are value statements that we want local people to be able to participate in this plan. I think I added in hand environmental considerations, you know, the Montclair Environmental Commission, sustainability, all of these elements have been infused in the, in the vision that the community contributed so many ways to. The health of the downtown community itself is an asset and a beneficiary of this project. In place of the blighted property sitting between the vibrant Bloomfield Avenue corridor to the west and the Bloomfield Avenue corridor to the east, it will be a living and engaging element which connects residents and visitors to opportunities of interest to them. People desire and, and deserve the social infrastructure to live, play, eat, and walk downtown. There are approximately 17,000 people living within walking distance of downtown. We all will be greatly enhancing the experience for residents and visitors alike, and the fourth ward businesses will experience enhanced connections to support their offerings in Montclair. The financial equation. I expect that the burden to create a viable and financially successful project rests first with the developer. BDP has had to ensure that this can be viable and successful. And if the project is successful, then the township stands to benefit financially above and beyond all the ways I've just uh, you know, enumerated. We, we have also had analysis done for the council, and we've received two different reports from our former financial advisor and another consultant who was part of the process both offered either way that the project shows that the township will be receiving financial benefit, and I'm left to understand that if the conditions bear out more than conservatively estimated, we will be realizing a great amount of annual revenue, which we can reinvest in the township for the benefit of our residents. So with appreciation to all who have done much work and analysis and been passionate on this over the years, I will again be voting yes on this plan. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Deputy oh, Mayor. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Ms. Burr, I just have a, a couple quick questions. And I, I don't really want to go back and forth on the past history. I know I asked you that night, and you gave me an answer. And then I said, are you sure? And you gave me an answer, and we're going to leave it at that. I do have a concern, though, that if one of the purported reasons to revisit this is because of perceived conflict with a member, there's still a conflict with a member, and all due respect to you, Bob, this is a legal question. I'm really trying to just get an answer. It's not an arrow or anything. If we still have a perceived conflict with a member and we go through this process, aren't we right back where we started from? Well, I wouldn't say we're right back where we started from, but I would say that- What would you say? <laughs> what I would say is that if the member decided not to recuse himself and vote, we would have, there would be an issue that would have to be decided by the court. We don't know the facts of, of what the perceived con conflict was or is. Um, there may be no conflict. We just are perceiving it to be one because of- For the first individual or the second individual? The second individual. Okay. For Mr. Russo. The, Mr. Russo stated at the last, uh, at the public hearing during the last um, time this was on that he felt there may be some type of conflict or Absolutely. some, I, and, I, and right. he went on the record saying that what what the perceived conflict might be. Um, that that call one has to be dis decided by him, and as we said, when in doubt, sit it out. If you think you might have one, even whether you do or don't, just sit it out. But if he doesn't sit it out and he decides to vote and 
There is another challenge. Yes, it will be raised in litigation, and it will become a, lit a litigation issue, subject to discovery, depositions, so forth and so on. And he said two constituents, and I can ask Councilman Russo again what the, what the facts were that belied this situation, but he stated that there were two constituents that of his uh, that Mr. Plasic helped out. And were those family members? I don't believe they were. Were they close friends of his? I don't believe they were. What's the benefit that ran to Mr. Russo for, for Mr. Plasic to help, help two, con two constituents of his? Probably nothing. And therefore, thus, there probably isn't a conflict. But however, Mr. Russo raised the issue, so it's our advice, since he did it during a public meeting, as the advice of the law department, when in doubt, sit it out. And I thought we had come to pretty much an understanding on that. So I don't know if Mr. Russo plans to vote tonight, or if he plans to uh, recuse. I'm not sure where he stands on that. Um, but again, my advice to him would be, you know, when in doubt, sit, sit it out. And, and as a lawyer, I understand that it's going to be a court to decide. That's not really what I'm pointing at right now. We're, we're getting at an issue, I think, that we were trying to prevent a perceived conflict with the former councilman, which is what part of the reason we're going through this process again, only to have this issue raise its head again in a different context with a different individual. That's what I'm trying to get at, and that's what I'm trying to understand. And, and, because and we have gone through this process a ridiculous amount of times at this point right. and I need to know what what the process is where well, we're going with this how this uh, you know obviously a court's gonna have to decide one way or the other but right. the whole reason we're redoing this is it, so that we don't <coughs> get to that point well, but we might get to it again what, what and, and so let, let's be specific is what's the question other than should we not take the vote should we take the vote should we if mr. Russo decides he's going to participate should we not take the vote is that the I question? don't necessarily think that's the question with all due respect okay. and nor should you because quite frankly you're putting the onus that we need to redo this because there was a perceived conflict with another individual only to find out that there's still a conflict with another individual that's all yeah. I'm not the one who brought this up again <laughs> believe me I wouldn't have done that in a million years let me put you all at ease let me put you all at ease and by the way the uh, the reference, Mr. Russo, Mr. Russo, when I first started teaching, they called me Mr. Russo. So you remind me that I had to correct them. I want to be called Mr. Russo in the fourth grade class in Newark. <laughs> but you keep saying Mr. Russo, Mr. Russo. Okay. So, you know, you advised me of something last time when I just happened to mention, as I'm very honest and forthright and transparent with everybody, how wonderful a man Mr. David Plasek is, that he even helped a few people none of whom are connected with me, family or anything. They have been constituents. One was a business person in town and needed a lot of help. David's always willing to help. One person wanted to be a contestant for Miss New Jersey. I just told him, go see David, <laughs> go see David. David's wonderful, he's generous, he helped people. I don't think there's any conflict because I didn't gain anything by any of that. One person's even mad at me. <laughs> but. That's David and I between David and I. The thing is, I don't think I have a conflict, but because there's a perception, particularly by our attorney, that I have a conflict, and he keeps telling me I should recuse myself, I would have voted perhaps no tonight, which would really not be a conflict, would it? Because if the man did any favors for people that I sent to him, you'd think I'd be voting yes, right? That's a real conflict, you see. That's what our former councilman is accused of. But I wouldn't be doing that. I'm gonna recuse myself on the vote tonight to relieve you of all that. But I have an, a, another issue, and, and you know, I'm gonna recuse the vote, but I wanna be able, the reason I only abstained last time, because I was told by our attorney, yeah, you could abstain, you could recuse, either thing that you didn't feel comfortable. I'm very uncomfortable with something else that we're even putting this up for a vote tonight again when there's all these outstanding issues and when there's a new council to be elected in two months, less than two months, 50 days, my wife reminded me because she just can't wait till May 14th. So 50 days from today is going to be an election which will change things because nobody up here is running again <laughs> except me. So there is gonna be a new council, we know that, a new mayor council. I think it was, it's not good, just as Councilman Cummings said, to try to 
force something on a new group that's going to be coming in. I mean, you're going to have this other 45 days or whatever. So I will recuse from the vote to relieve you of all of that. But I wanted to say my piece, and you really can't do that when you're recused. But I'm going to take the liberty of just saying again, I want this project done. I went through the Haynes Building, if you all remember. The Haynes Building was empty for 15 years. And I was mayor in 2002 when we finally got an agreement to build the Siena. Now, it was when I left office in 2004 that it was finally built, but I was there when the, the dirt was dug out and we, we got it going. The Siena took 15 years. I don't want this to go on. But I do want a supermarket, as I told you, that's not anti-union, and I want, I want to do the things that David just suggested. Now, what I can't believe, you have to hear me as a transparent councilman, is that David Cubbings, I think he's already gotten the feeling that and I know David Placek would agree to some of these things. Good things, right? More senior housing. I saw the seniors, oh yeah, they like what David Cummings proved, and yet you're clapping when you, these four people here voted against it. <laughs> so here's two nice things that David proposed. I seconded it. What, because you don't like me? Maybe you don't vote for it? Forget it. It was good for the town to do these two additional things. It's good for the plan to have these two additional things. I would just like something in there that says we want a union friendly, that's what it's called, Tom Giblin, my assemblyman, our assemblyman, former assemblyman, told me that's all you really need is a union-friendly agreement with the grocer so that they're not going to stop people from organizing. I don't know if you've been watching all over the country. Everybody's organizing. Everybody's joining unions. Unions are winning strikes and fights all over between the UAW and the Starbucks people. A union-friendly agreement is all I'm looking for, okay, as a union leader. But I just say to you again, you see what just happened? Four people voted against doing a good thing. This is why I'm running again. Thank you. Are you recusing yourself? When the vote comes. Well, we're debating the issue now, so you have to recuse means you have to leave the dais. Yeah, Bob. Oh, I have to leave uh, the room. No, the you have to leave the Step dais. off the dais. Yeah, well, I could go to the men's room, right, which I yeah. need to do. And so what happens if Bob wins? Some chocolate. If yeah, Bob what wins. Maybe I should sit here and listen to this. If Bob wins. He has to remain absent of this project, correct? Yeah, this is the problem. I can't say a thing about it. You need anything. to understand what you're doing. Oh, Bob. maybe I shouldn't do it. That's that's the question I have. That, you're correct. David. So, if so he, Bob, if he, if he recuses now, oh, you're he excluding me from any further discussion about this. I'm not if I'm excluding the council? you. No, I you're not excluding, excluding you. No, I'm I didn't saying say when you he out says I have to recuse, you're recusing me from any further discussion on this topic in the future. When that I just would bared be, my whole that, honest that would be my self opinion. out here with Mr. Placic? That would be my opinion. Hmm. Interesting. You need to reason just that's just a question. And I and the one thing well, I'm Well maybe curious. I'll lose you won't have to worry about that either. We've yeah. got uh, Councilman Schlager's been waiting too. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna refuse only because Schlager. I respect the advice of council and I respect the people here want to get this over with. Councilman Schlager. I, I just quickly want to say that um, as Carol Schlein said when she when you got up to speak no plan is perfect and I um, I'm one of the few people here I believe except for Carmel Lockman who sat through the entire planning um, at the planning board of the Brian Stoller Hampshire properties pro um, um, presentation and development project which ultimately went away for many many reasons then we again sat through Mr. Placic's um, uh, project proposal. This is a much better proposal. It's a much better project. I, um, I, I think the 5% senior housing, the 5% um, veterans housing might be a great idea and the diff and different and redoing the parking might be a good idea but that's not what we're voting on tonight that's not in this proposal i want to see this get moved forward tonight if that comes back that it might get tweaked a little bit with different housing situation different parking situation i'm happy to look at that but i will tell you what happened to me about three months ago i went to the pineapple express uh, restaurant and uh, for a fundraiser I was by myself, I parked um, a little, looking at the Pineapple Express to the right a little bit, um, and I was walking back, it was dark, it was around nine o'clock, and I was walking to my car, and I saw a rat. I saw a rat run right into the, Monk, into the Lackawanna Plaza um, building. And I, I ran to my car, on, and I realized 
That building's been empty for over seven years. Somebody said 10, but I think it's over, it's seven. And, um, and I, I can't imagine what goes on in that building. No offense, Mr. Plasek, but, you know, but th somebody said there's leaks, there's, there's, uh, it's abandoned, there's nothing going on there, and there's two food establishments on either side of the building. Naturally, I would think it promotes rodents of all kinds, and I saw one that night. It was, it was late, and it was quiet, and, and that really, really upset me. And I know that we have a rodent and rat problem. I know that um, Mr. Gleason has talked about that on occasion, um, but we, we can't p perpetuate that. We have to move forward. And um, I will support this project tonight and hope that we can move forward and that this gets done as, as soon as it possibly can. Thank you. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, Ms. Mayor, I'm sorry. I actually got interrupted when I was doing my questioning, so I did have one left. Uh, Mr. Burke, can you help me in terms of the timetable, knowing we're not here that much longer? Do we have time, given the current council schedule of meetings, to get the, to vote on this again before we are done June 30th, July yes. 1st? Yes, uh, we're, we will be able to hold from today, moving forward, we will be able to hold a public hearing before the council um, is no longer in office. Will this that, existing council. Will that necessitate us having to move any of the existing council dates to do so? Well, I believe there's on the table uh, a change that's being requested in May, but no, we wouldn't have to do it. Uh, we we still have the the uh, May meeting and the June meeting. I believe we can at least the June meeting. The June meeting would suffice. So, but there's a, now I'm interested because now you're telling me there's a proposal to move some of our dates. I didn't hear about this You will before. have to discuss that with the manager or with, or with your colleagues. I would be happy to do so now that I know about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Councilman Chair. Yes. Uh, Thank you. You know, uh, Councilor Slayer, you made some good points. And also my colleague, Councilor Cummings, uh, I hope that some of those things can be tweaked down the line, but that, as you indicated, that's not what we're here for tonight. You know, that is something that can be worked on. I believe, you know, as we move forward. Uh, Lackawanna Plaza. You know, uh, before I do anything, you know, first of all, I'm very grateful that I have an opportunity to sit up here. You know, to have an opportunity to serve this community as I've served for many, many years. Uh, what I do, first of all, is I, I pray and I meditate before I make any kind of decisions. And uh, I also speak with some of the ancestors. I heard Councilor Cummings talk about uh, MNDC at uh, 228 Bloomfield Avenue. 228 Bloomfield Avenue in 1906 was a Roman house. My grandfather and grandmother lived in that house at that time before they bought their house at 114 North Fullerton Avenue. Lackawanna Plaza at that time was a vibrant hub of activity, one of the most vibrant hubs in this region, this entire region. Uh, I would wonder, and I thought to myself, what would they think if they saw was, which was at this location right now and how we've been floundering around, can't make a decision around and around and around for 10 years and had not been able to move forward on this. It's just to me, unbelievable. I would say to the uh, candidates, you know, that make a decision, make a decision and stand by it. You know, in the police department, you can't waffle around. You got to make a decision sometimes and stand by it and move forward. That to me, this is not a heavy lift. This is an easy lift. This is something good for the community that we should be moving forward. You know, you ride past there now, as somebody uh, indicated, it's like a truck stop. You know, and nothing against the tractor trailer uh, individuals who are using that location because they serve a great purpose in, in our region also. But as for me, I truly believe in moving this forward. 
I think it's going to be something good for the township of Montclair. And I'm sure as the old residents and the ancestors, if they're looking down and watching, they would be very happy that we're moving forward with this. So I'm going to vote yes on it. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, before I go to Madam Clerk, I will say this also. We had a couple of our seniors who spoke tonight to it. Uh, I'll just quickly note, too, as we've worked really hard um, to, to look at affordability in this town, whether it's the rent control ordinance that I know we're very, very proud of, uh, certainly the component there for seniors specifically, accessory dwelling units, it is also really important to have workforce housing. When we're talking about individuals mm -hmm. being able to live in a community and be able to work in that same community, that also matters. So I think this is why this is a really great project um, overall. And uh, Madam Clerk, call, call the roll. Uh, Janice, the two recommendations that I put forth, will you be able to include them in the future? Uh, it, there's no, you could always amend the plan in the future to address those. Or an applicant come in and they could seek a waiver or a variance from those particular provisions. Um, so there are options. Okay. okay. And then I just want to clarify on a comment about workforce. Of all of our units that we have, how many workforce places do we have being used? We ha in Montclair? Yeah. There, we don't have any workforce housing. But we've had it in our plans to where workforce housing was, a, was, a, was we offered. Ha we had a form of workforce housing that did not have the necessary details in terms of procedures to make it feasible. And the way it's drafted in this plan, it's very workable. And it has the, the protections in place to make it work. I just want to be clear that workforce housing has not been done in this town. It has not. So when we say that having workforce housing is something that's important. We can't say it's important when we don't have it. I think that's exactly why you can say it's important. Well, we don't have it because the okay. cost of it is too much. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk? Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Absent. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, next. Uh, again, I know my colleagues have had a chance to look at this over for, for the last number of days, and also uh, I just asked at the beginning if there's anyone that want to be held out. Otherwise, I'm going to move these in block. Oh, yeah. right. The agenda. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, is there an item that someone wants held out? Can you give me a second? Well. Are we talking agenda ordinances or resolutions? Uh, Temporary budget, I have some questions on. Um, we have to add this to the agenda, Mayor. I don't think it's listed. It's, it's uh, that one. I don't know if it's the last one. Which one are you talking about? It was handed to us. Well, it was sitting here. So we'll do the last one. Okay. It, it doesn't have any, a letter on it, even. I don't know what it is. Oh nine three. No, it's not. It ended up. Oh, I'm looking at. Well, I'm looking at the agenda we came with. But we didn't have it. Do you have your full packet? Okay. So I will move uh, resolutions uh, C uh, through P without without again item N without N. So C through P, withholding item N. And I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution R24091, which is a resolution amending the 2024 temporary budget. I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Question, concerns, comments? Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. I just want to get an understanding of where are we with our budget the, for 2024? We, do we have anything working that was going to be presented? Because I know budgets technically are due this month. Uh, it is my intent to present the budget at the next meeting. That would be the April, April 10th. 10th meeting? Yes. All right. I'm not going to be here for that meeting. That said, um, in terms of so 
I think it's the 10th. Do we have, as you look forward, could I please get um, any capital projects that you're considering? And then I also have some questions about, as you move forward on that budget, the where we are in terms of our debt service on that, and then also if there is a potential tax increase, what that number will be. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of for the temporary budget, where I have the, where I see the um, operating under the manager's office, can you get me some details of what this is for? The, it's, I think it's 166783 to 75 cents. Just want to know. Yes, sir. So, do we haven't? What do we know? What these? What are we? What are we spending here on? I I believe we pay for the uh, uh, the uh, Arby Group. We pay for some legal bills. We pay for a whole bunch of stuff that has been being shifted to the manager's office. Before under the budget, uh, a lot of this stuff was placed in different departments. So we are centralizing some of those costs. I believe it also includes the. Um, Auditor and, and some other professionals. Which bucket are we on? So right here. One. I will get you all the details. Counselor. Yeah. Can you get me the details sure. of that? And then the same thing I asked for the um, law department. Sure. For what those are spent for. Um, I I didn't get this until I was I went, I didn't get this till late last night. So no I, worries. I didn't get to it till then. So I would have sent this to you before. Then. Happy to get it for you. Yeah. So those are the two things that I I have for you right now. Sure. Any other uh, questions, concerns, comments? Okay, seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? No. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Okay, with that, thank you very much. I'm going to open it up to public comment. Anyone from the uh, public? We, we have to do the bill resolution? Well, we actually included it in the. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't have to read yeah, it? Yeah, I know. Oh. Would you like to anyway, yeah, Councilwoman? No, I'm, I'm Are good. You sure? I'm good. <laughs> I mean, you know. No, I'm good. I didn't know we were actually able to do that. About all these you know, years. Listen, Wait, all I think these years we don't we want to break some that? tradition here. All these why don't, you read, done. Why don't you read that one? I do want to hear it. Okay. Yeah. Whereas invoices against the Township of Montclair in favor of the following persons for the amount set opposite there, respective names have been received, duly audited, and found correct. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Township of Montclair in the County of Essex that said invoices be, and they are hereby ordered paid, and that checks be drawn by the Finance Department to the order of such persons for the amount respect and here and after stated on the computer printout attached here to and made a part here of this bill list is dated March 26 the year of 2024 for the amount of six million eight hundred sixty nine thousand five hundred eighty one dollars and thirty cents and I so move thank you I, I like the the redundance on that one sounds good uh, without any well we did pass it already so but okay <laughs> Just, okay. Can't go back. Go ahead. Can't go back. Well, I mean, it's fine. Can't. Um, would you like a question? Okay. Uh, but thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, we voted on this one, but uh, we will open it up to public comments. So we have. Uh, um, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Gonna get three minutes this. Uh, oh, great. Okay. Good evening, uh, Council. Uh, this uh, I'm William Scott, the uh, chair of the Monkley NAACP Housing Committee, and I just want to make the announcement that the Monkley NAACP will be hosting a Monkley Renters Information Forum. This forum will be held on Wednesday, April the 17th, starting at nine o'clock. The location will be the Charles Bullock School. Uh, we ask everyone to come out, join us uh, in the discussion. Uh, we want tenants to learn about their rights, uh, landlords' responsibilities, hear, uh, hear about rent control, the Montclair Rent Control Ordinance, uh, its status as uh, uh, being in place for the last uh, two years, understanding tenants' or, uh, options to organize uh, uh, within their area, find out the uh, availability of legal services uh, if needed uh, from renters. Uh, tenants and landlords get to, to ask questions uh, during the forum. There will be uh, a presence from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, uh, the New Jersey Attorney General's Office, 
Uh, we'll have representation from the Township of Montclair Office of uh, Housing, Section 8. Representation from the uh, Rent Control uh, Office. Uh, we'll also have uh, uh, organizations as uh, such, uh, the Montclair, excuse me, the New Jersey Tenants Organization. Uh, we'll also have legal services, as I mentioned before, from the Essex County Legal Services, Community Health and Law Projects, uh, representation for uh, individuals with uh, disabilities. Myself, obviously, will be there as a representative of the Montclair Housing Committee. And we'll also have representation from the Montclair Landlord Tenant Advisory Committee. Please come out and enjoy the discussion and find out uh, your rights, if uh, necessary, from a tenant standpoint or a landlord. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening again, uh, David Corfish. I live at 58 Tuxedo Road, also president of Montclair Climate Action. I just first want to very briefly, I've talked about biking before, I want to mention again, I appreciate the presentation on Vision Zero. I just want to reinforce by mentioning a study I read recently which found the best way to improve safety for all road users, cars, bikes, and pedestrians is actually to improve biking. There's a strong correlation between biking and road safety. So anything the council can do or any future councils can do to improve that will actually reduce safer roads. Uh, produce safer roads. The other thing I want to mention is the Climate Action Plan, which I know I've discussed before. It's been, um, uh, I know it was approved by the, Monk, the Environmental Commission. I can't remember if it was January or February. I'm again here to urge you to like, support it and pass it so Lisa Johnson and the township can start acting on it and wondering if there's any updates on the status of the Climate Action Plan approved by the, the Commission. Thanks. Dave, before you walk away, um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you and for the public if you know is are there any Earth Day events planned like by the nonprofit yes Did actually uh, we in the Sierra Club are working with Lisa and the bid there's gonna be a large I mean the Northeast Earth Coalition always runs their things of course and the, uh, there's at Crane Park um, I think on the 21st and on the 28th on South Park there's gonna be an EV day and a large Earth Day event on the 28th on the 28th of April that's that afternoon it's a Sunday right so it's going to be um, South Park Street there'll be cars electric cars electric bikes vendors we'll have lots of information Lisa Johnson her assistant helping planet and we're involved in the Sierra Club there's gonna be everyone show up it's gonna be great it's gonna be the uh, first Earth Day we've had in a long time I think so it's gonna be and great. we'll discuss the climate action plan. Okay. thank you right. great thank you thank you Good evening, Council, uh, Mr. Burr. My name is Patricia Hurt. I live at 35 Irving Street, and I am a candidate for Fourth Ward Council. I wanted to come and first commend you, Mr. Cummings, on your motion, um, even though it was denied by this council. I think as, I just want the council to realize that a lot of our residents in the fourth ward, especially elders, are getting reverse mortgages in order to stay in their homes. And if you know anything about reverse mortgages, once the person dies, the beneficiaries have one year to pay whatever that outstanding mortgage is, and they are not able to do it. And so a lot of homes in the fourth ward, because I have been their real estate attorney, have gone into foreclosure because the beneficiaries cannot, cannot pay those lump sum payments. So affordable housing is very critical, especially in the fourth ward. The fourth ward is the last frontier as far as I'm concerned. It's the last place where developers, if we are not careful, will monopolize and ruin the beautification of Montclair. So it is commendable that we are going to be looking at affordable housing, but we have to hold developers to the, to the point as to what they give for our senior citizens. Because senior citizens every year are losing their houses either because they can't pay the taxes or the beneficiaries are losing their houses because they can't make those mandatory lump sum payments. And I myself have represented at least six 
senior citizens in Montclair, in the fourth ward, that have been subject to that. And I know that there are others. So as we move forward, there's no perfect plan, but let's keep the seniors in mind. I mean, heck, I'm a senior, but <laughs> uh, I might have a better uh, pension than some, but let's, let's not forget them at all. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Happy to be here. Ahava Felicidad, president and first founder of the Tenants Organization of Montclair. You cannot be reminded enough, we cannot be reminded enough of the great work that was done here to get our rent control ordinance. So, I always wanna make sure that I come in to um, just give an update on how things are going and also request volunteers to come work with us. So we are the group that brought us all rent control via the ordinance that we have in place. And I'm happy to see all the forward movement with regards to our rent control ordinance. I would ask that anyone listening, watching, please check our Facebook page for a change to the date of our April meet and greet. We're always recruiting volunteers. We've gotten a few new ones to run short video clips of topics from the tenant's rights manual that can be found at lsnjlaw.org and the township's website under rent control. And we are just encouraging more tenants to get involved now. Um, better, n now is better than later, definitely, so people can be in place for the future as we recruit um, more tenants from everywhere in town. It's very easy to get started to work with us. Um, and if you are a tenant who's in need of assistance, we are still having meetings. Two or more of us get on a call or a Zoom to provide resources and we just keep moving forward. You can reach us at tenants organization Montclair at gmail.com. Our number is 973-936-8848. And I wanted to thank uh, many of the tenants who I've spoken to recently who are calling in on behalf of neighbors and friends to help them. Uh, this just truly shows the heart of our community. Even though we do need to speak directly to the person who they're calling about, I really appreciate everyone that's been calling to help out a friend and taking on uh, responsibilities for others who are very overloaded, even in just reaching out to us to say, hey, how can we help? So I wanna see that continue to happen as well and then um, let the word travel. Thank you all, have a good night. Yes, Montclair in the house. Uh, Diane Anglin, Montclair. Um, so I wrote stuff down, but I couldn't say it before because he was like, make sure you're talking about Lackawanna. Um, I am always proud to be from Montclair, but I am not always proud of Montclair. Um, I do want to wish everyone happy Holy Week and send prayers to those participating in Ramadan. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you is a biblical concept spoken by Jesus. Um, all, it's the golden rule. I can, I had a lot more preaching to do to you, but I say this because we're getting so far away from respecting each other. I would never say that we always have to agree, but we can disagree and not personally attack people. Our township leaders have families, jobs, and friends who have to hear some of the people who come to this podium speak so badly about them personally. And even today, to see Lori Price Abrams, Councilor Lori Price Abrams be disrespected is um, disheartening to me. In about a month, we will elect a whole new council, whole new council. Everybody's gonna be new on this dais. Um, there's one person running again who was disrespectful tonight, and I bet a lot of you all aren't running because the council's been treated so badly. Some of the people who would come to this microphone and downright disrespect you 
by calling you names or running for these seats. And how, and I know Peter, people don't want to talk about Peter Yacobellis, but the treatment that he received from this microphone was dis, just horrible. You can disagree with things that he may have done or things like that, but when you start attacking people personally, it just became the culture of this event here. I hope people are paying attention. We should want representatives that are professional and will respect the clerk, the employees, our attorney, and our manager, and each other. I stand before you to say that I, well, you knew I was in favor of Lackawanna, but I'm really, um, I was upset that there was a group of people that are running that because someone didn't want to play with them in the playground or be on their ticket, went to the Montclair local and does this whole article disrespecting women. And, and I'm upset that they were black women. If there's people running for this council who are against something that one of the groups that are running, you will get attacked on social media, you get accused of all these things. I hope the next council people pay attention to who comes to this mic and is so disrespectful. If you vote for them again, then you want this kind of stuff to continue. Um, and, and I'm against it. So I'm looking for good behavior and good people to come up here and represent us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Well, I must have missed something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> me, me too, Bob. So uh, Sarah Avery, I, I live on Irving Street. And, and just, you know, to uh, react to some of those comments, you know, this council, for the most part, isn't running because they've committed fraud. And it's, you know, it's documented, it's clear, there's no question about it that this council colluded to protect Stafford when there is a preponderance of evidence of that he created a hostile work environment and absolutely tormented the female employees. It's, it's not even a question. So, so you know, where do, where do I start? Where do I start? Let's, let's start with, you know, the uh, 2124 excerpt out of uh, Stephanie Schwartz's uh, inter interrogatory uh, response to uh, the uh, plaintiff's attorney claiming that, uh, uh, denying that the plaintiff was subjected to retaliation and, you know, everybody uh, on board with that. So let's just talk about retaliation of the CFO and the amount of money that was spent of our tax dollars to defend, you know, the indefensible, all right? The CFO was accused of violating her duty of loyalty and acting unethically, which is completely false. She's the only ethical person in this group, other than Russo and Cummings. None of the rest of you have any ethics. The CFO was excluded from budget meetings. The CFO was, this is what he tried to do tried to exclude the CFO from having anything to do with the payment of the O'Toole Scrivo invoice, tried to prevent the CFO from having anything to do with MF, with the uh, fire department, including the pension liability, excluded the CFO from the finance committee. I'm late this evening because I was in a finance committee meeting for an organization. That's good governance, having a finance committee. This is not an example of good governance, what happens here. The CFO was accused of s suing the GIF, and by the way, the mayor took a contribution from the GIF. It's called um, Business and Governmental, uh, I'll tell you what it is, Business and Governmental Insurance Agency. Yeah, the mayor took a contribution from them, and they're part of the GIF. Um, the CFO, they tried to prevent the CFO from having anything to do with the purchase of liability insurance. That's a Garden State Mutual Insurance Fund, which approved the reimbursement of the payment to the threat actor. They sought to remove 
the CFO for, from Thank performing you. her core job duty. Thank you, that's your Which time. is contrary to what the community is entitled to. Thank you. And believe me, you have not heard the last, last of this. Thank you. Yeah, you, you think, you think that you, Thank that you. I'm not, you. that my comments mean nothing. But I have been making these comments in public comment sessions. It is all recorded. I am a whistleblower and I cannot be ignored. How are you going to retaliate against me, Mayor? Hi, I'm Chrissy Thomas. I'm a 54-year resident of Montclair. I was raised here, and I came here to raise my only child in this amazing, diverse, accepting town. Now I'm running for mayor, and I'm very excited about it. I've been coming to these meetings for years and really have learned so much about the workings of our township. I feel full of energy and ideas about how things can be improved for residents, municipal employees, and all of the stakeholders, including our children and our visitors who come to Montclair to work or enjoy our shopping, or our restaurants, or our museums, or our music festivals, or our parades. You guys all know how great this place is because we all moved here for a reason. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that signed petitions and participated in the democratic process that so many talented people could run for office. This is a true labor of love for me. I've been so overwhelmed by the number of interested citizens of Montclair who've reached out to candidates to try to find out what we're about. I love that people want to make informed decisions when they go to the ballot box on May 14th. I also want to thank all the people inside and outside of the government who were willing to share their expertise with me. I want to thank our police for taking me on a ride along. I think they're a shining example of how things can be done. They're giving it their all in crumbling buildings. I really want to thank Manager LaPola for reaching out to all of the candidates proactively and spending so long with me. I am so grateful to you. I want to thank the members of the business community who not only care about development in this town, but also have invested their lives in this town. I want to thank the researchers and informed citizens who spend hours going over documents and help to expose corruption and anomalies and processes that confuse us all. I want to thank groups like Bike Walk Montclair and members of the planning board and also community groups that have invited me to events to learn and to volunteer. I feel like I'm a part of this community from the fourth ward to the first and I have friends in every one of them even if they don't know my name and only my face. I also want to give a really special shout out to the men and women of our ambulance unit who invited all of the candidates to learn about how they work. Did you all know that the ambulance isn't part of our municipal government? I'm impressed by how little money they manage to function on. They're a paragon of efficiency. They run around all day and save lives day in and day out on a shoestring budget. I'm, it's so impressive, but it's also a little sad. To me, it seems even a little unfair when you compare their work to other groups, like the fire department. The ambulance actually goes out on more than double the calls of the fire department and is trained to save lives while working for less than $20 an hour. They're so dedicated. I just encourage everyone to donate to the ambulance. Thank you. Thanks. Evening, Eric Tomato, uh, 25 Norwood Avenue in the first ward where I am a uh, candidate for the council. Um, I'm running on the slogan of a clean government advocate, so I kind of feel obliged to uh, talk about uh, the process tonight with um, the Lackawanna vote, uh, and I will probably get myself into trouble by saying that I thought it was actually an improvement. Uh, I'm glad it was maybe a little bit embarrassing or awkward to revisit that vote. But I think that it was a good thing to do. And I think also Councilor Russo was a good thing when in doubt to, to sit it out. Um, I am, however, a little bit concerned going forward, um, or I'm hopeful, let's say, that the advice of the planning board 
would be given and received uh, uh, in a different way than it was last time. Um, this is the most important development that's happening in our community in, in a lifetime. And to have the planning board's recommendations and its, its sort of overarching recommendation that the, that the current design did not you know, conform with the master plan and have that set aside when they voted seven to one is not good process. It's legal, but it's not necessarily good process. And I'm especially concerned that after that happened, two you know, long-serving and outspoken and expert members of that board were replaced by two people without experience, one of whom's experience seems to be mostly as a political operative. They may be a good person. So what I'd really hope to see is that if they come back again, voting against it, that that then triggers a different vote the next time, just in the sake of process. What I'd also very much not like to see is an unexplained flop by the planning board because there are just a couple of new members because it's the same plan that's going to them and why people would change their votes on it would, would definitely leave me uh, and I think many others asking questions. Um, so that's about it. One other unpopular thing I'll say is uh, Councillor Schlager, uh, I'm a rat owner. Oh, wow. Rats are lovely. Aww. You just have to know them. So I'm not saying the rats that come out of Lackawanna are nice ones, but, but in general, this is the most marginalized member of our community, and so just keep, keep them in mind. Okay. <laughs> we, we will send all the rats your way. You can have them. <laughs> Watch that Dracula movie with that guy with the rats, rats, thousands, millions of them. Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Amy Veach, and I live on Upper Mountain in the corner of Mount Hebron. And I, I came with Vision Zero. I wasn't intending to speak today, but I, I feel like I just want to get up. And um, I've lived here for 10 years in Montclair, and I only started coming to council meetings about last October, and really advocating for my corner. And Councilor uh, Herlock, I really appreciate you listening and taking up our cause. And to all of you, I, I know it's been a rough, <laughs> uh, a rough uh, session or whatever you would like to call it. Um, <laughs> and I know many of you are not coming back but I want to thank you sincerely. I really, I feel like the work the Vision Zero is doing is so important and it really will make a difference. And um, thank you, all of you, I recognize it and I hope that we can take it farther with the Complete Streets policy. I feel like it's, it's really what this township needs to make change and um, so. Thank you, and I wish you all well. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. Okay, seeing no one else, I'll close public comment. Mr. Polo, manager. Right? I have no comment, Mayor. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was advised today by the county clerk's office that the mail-in ballots will be delayed. They were set to start sending them March 30. Mm. There's an issue with the printer. As soon as we know more information, we'll put it on our webpage. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Attorney? Uh, yes, Mayor. I just want to say to the candidates that are running for council, if they would like to meet with me, uh, I have an open-door policy. You come and meet and if there's any questions you have about the form of government, about the um, laws that govern the governing body, I'd be happy to s discuss those with you. So. Thank you. Councilman Cummings? Uh, yes, Mayor. One thing. Uh, tomorrow, 7 o'clock, the fourth ward candidates will be at Bullock School, where you can come and listen to them. It's a very simple format. They will each get the opportunity to speak to three issues that are important to them, to the township, and then also they will be taking questions. It will be televised, uh, it will be recorded and rerun on TV 34 at some point, but it's an opportunity to get to meet them and hear what they have to say. Uh -huh. uh, Councilman Price Abrams? Oh, one more thing, I'm sorry. Councilman Cummings? And also, um, Roger, I appreciate you coming by the Park House two weeks ago. 
where we celebrated my father's 90th birthday. Um, it was a great time, and uh, Wally Choice Community Center, it was all had, it was a family reunion, it really, and so it was a great time, and I appreciate you do stopping by. Bob, I was surprised you didn't make it. <laughs> Councilwoman uh, Price Abrams. I still got a wife that, you know. I had a thought, seems to have taken a left turn. Um, oh, I, I did want to mention, so I, I appreciate Vision Zero, uh, you know, really that this work has been going on. And it, it obviously sits on top of other work. We acknowledged it earlier. This isn't the first. It's just that it's a really concerted, thoughtful approach at tackling issues that each of us in our wards knows from constituent concerns, things we've witnessed, things we've been told about. Um, so last night I had met with people just north of where I live on Harrison Avenue, um, in the Brookwoods, where there are several crosswalks and children going to school or just crossing the street to get the school bus going north. You know, you take your life into your hand. The parent, it's, it's stuff has to get done. And I, and I know that the police, you know, we heard from them in this regard. We know they do many of the things that we need them to do. Um, we need to figure out what the traffic calming ideas are. So there's a lot to come from this course of study with Vision Zero, but there's also responsibility that every one of us and everyone driving through our town, you know, needs to take on in terms of the safety of all users of our roadways and, and walkways. And so, um, you know, I look forward to those solutions. In the meantime, I know that we will be pursuing, you know, whatever those fixes are that the Traffic Bureau of the Police and, and I know I'll be, you know, following up in my piece and, and each of us does, but, um, you know, as I mentioned, I, I know that there was a pedestrian safety committee, you know, Renee, that I know was one of your ideas that you had championed. There's many iterations of this, and we just also have to take some self-responsibility for the rush that we feel like we're in. I know since we started lowering speed limits near schools, for example, Councilor Cummings has said, you know, it's hard to drive that speed. I know it. I mean, you've got to, like, keep your foot almost on the brake not to let the car drive as fast as it wants to go. It's a challenge, and I just, I do remind all of us and everyone maybe listening, to consider that a life-saving possible challenge. So that's all I have for tonight. Thanks. Councilman Russo? Yes. Um, my wife's outside waiting for me. Um, I came in the middle of somebody criticizing, I think criticizing me maybe. I don't know. But, you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. was on TV today. I don't support him. I was his father's coordinator. I have beautiful memories. Councilman Herlock has a beautiful framed picture of Robert Kennedy senior right bill yes, that i gave you, you. but bobby that. said something today in his speech that people need to listen to each other and they're not he was trying to say that all the different factions and right and left republicans democrats that are criticizing each other and fighting with each other because there's a lot of division in the country should start listening that his father was listening to the very people the last day day or two before he got killed his father was listening to the Black Panthers and others in a, a meeting in Oakland who were criticizing him. And everybody wanted uh, Robert Kennedy, this is the father now, to leave the meeting. But he said, no, I'm going to stay and listen to everybody who's criticizing me because I want to hear what they have to say and we should listen. So unfortunately, we lost him. But the, the son was making that point today, which I want to remind everybody it's good to really listen and I just constantly listen to my constituents. I, I just keep bringing up these little things that people bring up to me. They beg me to help them with things, and I just don't know if our system of government is up to it. I wanted to raise the question of, you know, I, I just read an article today that somebody who was dismissed in Palisades Park, I'm not going to get into the individual, but somebody dismissed in Palisades Park from a job was hired here for a job. I don't know if that happened, but... People are sending me messages and articles that make me upset because the way we manage things here. This government, you know, we have a lot of local good people and we should hire them when we can. We should use their talents and skills and experience. And, you know, I, I just don't, I'm not happy with the way we've been managing things. So I know people were hoping I was going to retire and I might be retired by the people of this town in two months, only 50 days away, but I decided to put myself up again just to try to help a transition to new people. I hope I could do that. I hope I could still speak about some things because people are calling me now, wow, you did something wrong. You should have voted no. You shouldn't have listened to the town. They're all telling me how bad I did a terrible thing now, oh, that I recused. I try to do what you said I should do, right? 
and I try to do what would be helpful to the council. I try to do what would be helpful to the town. And I still am not happy with this whole thing, but, you know, I try to do what's right, and I'm always transparent. So I'm going to leave now with my wife. Thank you. Councilman Terry. I'm going to be brief. You know, from time to time, I like to give a little tidbit of history in this community. You know, uh, I realize that uh, the majority of people here now or have been here maybe uh, 10, 20 years or less even, you know. Uh, I like to give points on some of the people who helped build Montclair to get it to the point of where it is right now. And I think that that's important. I remember what it was like growing up here in the 50s, in the 60s. You know, the type of camaraderie, the type of community togetherness that it had, you know. Uh, I heard Mrs. England talk about, uh, you know, uh, trying to work together with each other. You know, some of that stuff that happens now would have never happened back then. You would agree to disagree, you know. But uh, I realize things are different, and I don't care if you've been here for a month. You're a Montclairian now. I would hope as we go on in the future that people will agree to disagree and try to work together for the betterment, not just of themselves, but for the entire community. I think Mr. Cummings, Mr. Cummings' family goes back a long ways also here in, in Montclair. His dad and his, his aunts and them uh, helped raise me coming up, you know, and it was a joy spending that time with them, you know, knowing that their span on earth is becoming short. So that was an honor as it is an honor still being here. And one other thing, and this is no disrespect to the counselors, the candidates, or whoever's going to be elected, I intend to work here just like I did in any other job right down to the last second that I'm sitting in this seat right here. So anybody thinks that I'm going to pass something on or hand something off to another counselor or something like that, that's not going to happen with me. Now, maybe somebody else may agree to do that, but I'm not going to do that. Thank you. Thank you. We're here. Do the job. <laughs> Why you got to bring that? <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman Council Schlager. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor. I, um, I'm very happy to say that um, I ha uh, Mr. Ashley, the new superintendent of public works, has informed me that through Mr. Lapola, that w uh, new picnic benches will be installed in Edgemont Park, along with a shade canopy that will go over them. There is no shade at all in Edgemont Park. So after um, um, ball players or t-ball players play on the baseball fields, um, if it's, if there's lightning or if there's any kind of bad weather, um, they have nowhere to go. So there will be a new shade structure uh, installed um, over the new picnic benches, which I'm very, very happy about. It also gives people a little, rep little, uh, rep a little uh, break to sit in the shade if they're playing in the playground. I did a walkthrough of the playground with Mr. Um, uh, Hernandez, and it's in pretty good shape. I, it needs a little power washing, but other than that, it, it was, um, I was very happy to see the, um, the, uh, the playground and, and how it looks right now. I also would want to remind people the week of April 8th is spring break for Montclair Public Schools, so there'll be lots of kids home and walking about. The weather's nice especially, so for everybody should be mindful of all our Montclair Public School kids that will be home. And I want to wish everybody a happy Easter holiday mm. that's coming up um, a, week, a, weekend from, a week from Sunday. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A um, couple of things. Uh, I, too, intend to work to the end, Mr. Terry. And to that end, I want to thank you, Mr. LaPola. Um, Michael, I'm giving you a compliment. You might want to look this way. Um, if, if you're going to if you're going to respond to it too, turn your microphone on. Yeah. So you can hear your response. Just thank you in advance, Mr. Mayor, because I'm usually Just, the one hitting the button him. from My here. God. Um, okay. Two things too this week. I know uh, I had also met with Mr. Hernandez in the Bonzo Preserve, with the leaders of the Bonzo Preserve, uh, Mr. Grouper, who was here a couple weeks ago, um, and we're working on the fence project that we hope to get completed in the next, I don't know, three and a half months, whatever it is we're here. And also, I know, Mr. LaPolo, we had talked about the bench pro uh, project as well in two of the other parks, Mountainside and Yanacall. 
So I appreciate your coordinating that with uh, Mr. Hernandez as well from the Department of Community Services. Um, and it was bittersweet too, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Terry and I attended <coughs> the last police swearing in. I'm fighting a cold, so I apologize. I'm popping halls and Advil as I can up here. Um, it was bittersweet because I've attended, God, I don't know how many of those over the last 12 years, and that was our last one. And again, we know, as you know, I work with police reform issues all over the country. And again, the Montclair Police Department is second to none, in my opinion. And thank all the people in the, um, in the department, from the chief on down to the dispatchers and everyone in between for the service that they have given to our community over the years. And I'm also happy to say, um, Mr. Mayor, that I joined the Women's Club of Upper Montclair as an associate member. Nice, nice. And on April 10th, I will be installed as one of the new members, and I'm looking forward to that service. Uh, that organization has done some wonderful work over the years uh, for our community. I continue to support them. We'll do so after I leave this seat, uh, good Lord willing. and. Um, Look forward to uh, many things ahead with that organization as a member now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. David Mayor. Congratulations on that membership. Nice job. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. LaPole, you said you had something additional you wanted to add? Uh -huh. Let me turn my mic on Yeah, first. thanks. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to mention that one of the issues that came up when we were dealing with the uh, baseball field issue is where the uh, baseball team was going to play. And I'm happy to report that the parents of the baseball team uh, I know at least uh, one of them is in the back of the room. Uh, they stepped up and they made improvements to the field at Nish in Nishwain Park, so they will have a safe field to play in. They've done a tremendous amount of work in a very short period of time, donating their time and money, and I just wanted to say thank you to them publicly. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Lapola. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm loving all the positivity today, you know, and the, even the, from the crowd. I mean. You went from being uh, some white guy to today being uh, all sorts of accolades. So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm we're impressed. Gonna with, we're going to end with Kumbaya, man. <laughs> yeah, yes, must be. Must be. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll certainly say this. I mean, <laughs> you just wouldn't believe it if you hadn't seen it yourself. Um, you know, just, just want to say, uh, you know, agree with council, my council colleagues. Uh, and, and we hear it in stories. Everybody working to the end, absolutely, right? That's the, that's the job. That's the charge, fixing benches, fixing, uh, fixing, fixing opportunities for people moving forward in this town. So I want to thank everybody for that work. And certainly, I know on behalf of all of us who remain committed to that work. Um, but also, you know, I, I, I certainly was appreciative. And certainly, um, some of the, the comments, the, the sincere comments that were made today about um, hopefully the people who are serving in, in these positions in the future. Um, and I think, you know, don't believe what people tell you. Watch what they've done and said over time, and you'll know exactly who they are. Um, but, uh, you know, watch and know who that is, and, and hopefully find uh, people. Everyone cares about this town for sure, uh, but find people who do it in the right way. Um, you know, and uh, being respectful is not a sign of weakness. Um, it's a sign of ability to work together and certainly um, something to be noted. But I want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for, for uh, the work tonight and the work that lies ahead. With that, motion to adjourn. Great. We're adjourned. Thank you. Love it.